good to be back. I always love doing the shows because it just puts that bit of pressure on me to bring up whatever needs to bring up. And um, as always, we call them shows, but really it's not really a show. It's not really entertainment. We're here to heal and be vulnerable together. And so that's always the invitation of divine intervention. We, we want a deep experience. And so that's what I wish for you in this next 30 minutes together, to go much more deeply into what is stopping us from being our true identity. Um, that's always my, my goal and, and the course's goal. Yeah, and so always, we all, we all know over, over the weeks so much can go on in our lives, so much comes up. And I was talking the other day, like, um, we can get so busy that we can um, miss the healing opportunities because life seems to take over when we have those uncomfortable feelings. And I guess what we practice here, and I know that you're all practicing that, is to actually be able to take our time with whatever's coming up in the moment when we can. Um, sometimes it can be pretty awkward um, that stuff's just coming up. That's the nature of the awakening journey. <clears throat> and um, most of the time on a Sunday when I, when I wake up, I feel, I feel good when I've got the shows, I feel raring to go. Um, but this morning was a little bit different. I, I almost forgot that I had the show. <laughs> I woke up and I had like a bit of a thick head. I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't feel too good, which is strange for me because I normally wake up good. That's never really been a problem for me. And then all of a sudden, oh God, I've got the show. <laughs> oh no, I've got to, you know, the ego wants to, you've got to do something. You've got to perform, but no, it's not about that. It's always about being vulnerable. And of course, the ego doesn't like being vulnerable. And me um, associating with the ego, I thought, I don't want to be vulnerable. <sighs> but here I am. Uh, in actual fact, as I'm sitting here, this vulnerability is just like going. I was sat waiting, doing my meditation before coming on. And I felt this energy coming up. And I thought, okay, there's some healing to come up. So we need a divine intervention now. So this is the perfect time for that. Um, doing it together being in this together. So as always, the invitation is, is that if you feel that you've got something in your heart right now um, that's been coming up, um, just allow that, allow that to come in because the Holy Spirit does the work. He does the heavy lifting and that's what we're really calling forth. It's not about a show and you're gonna get something from a show. It's really in your own mind and how much we really want this to actually hand over what it, what's stopping us. So that's always the invitation, just to be in that prayer right now in your mind to bring to the surface whatever needs to happen. And so some of you may know, um, if you tune into the show, that I set myself a goal of um, a year to deal with anger. And anger seems to be one of my core issues um, of course, there are really no core issues. There are no issues, but we like to make these things up. And what I've made up is anger. It seems very real to me. And um, so I said, okay, I want to, I want to, I'm going to deal with this completely in a year. And in actual fact, what I found through actually just saying that is it's really not about anger. It's really about hiding from the deeper emotions that are underneath unworthiness, um, pride, um, self-attack, self-hatred. Um, and often the anger hasn't really been coming up. So it's kind of been really, really interesting since starting this prayer. It's been like, wow, I'm starting to feel a, a, a shift in things. And what I'd noticed was is my reactions to certain things were, were not as normal. And I thought, wow, that's absolutely brilliant because I don't really feel I've done anything. And really that's, we just have to be willing, which is the wonderful thing about miracles, because we're not in charge of them. 
although often I feel that I would like to be. <laughs> um, it's like, you know, we hand something over and then expecting, and of course it can be in, instantaneous healing. That's what he says. That can happen. So I always want that. But it's like there's always a part of me that wants to like get in there and analyze and like, OK, I'm, I'm going to help you, Holy Spirit. And he's like, <laughs> I don't need your help. That's the last thing I need is, is your help, really. Um, but it can feel so hard just to like let whatever come up, come up to the surface because we want to somehow control it. Like, oh, what is it? What is this problem going on? Because we're so used to solving problems. And in a way, I, I can't solve the problems. My problem is that I'm wanting to control the healing. That's probably the, the main block for us all. We're trying to actually control the healing. And he's saying, listen, there's something much greater going on than meets the eye. And I know that actually through, through training in psychotherapy. Um, like when healing happened, it was something that really interested me that wasn't talked about much. I was like, something seems to happen between us that is unexplainable why the person seems to feel better. And my mission was to find out what that was. And it was like, oh, it's just a magical moment. It's, uh, it's, it's unexplainable. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting that there's all these psychotherapists out there, but sometimes these moments happen and we just can't explain what it is. So I want to I wanna know what that is. And then, of course, he, he led me actually to the Course in Miracles and I stopped being a psychotherapist. Um, and it was like, ah, the missing link is I'm not the healer. <laughs> I can't heal anybody and I actually can't even heal myself. But yet I can give it over to something that is much greater than me. And that is me. And it's like, wow, that is that is amazing. So once I got into this journey, I thought, wow, this is great. And actual fact, my first experience of A Course in Miracles, I, I knew nothing about it. I sat in the room in a circle and the guy was just talking about A Course in Miracles. And I had no understanding of what he was talking about. I thought, what the hell is he going on about? He's reading the book and it was quite kind of preachy. But I was kind of enjoying it. His, his passion was like coming through. And I'm just sat there. And as I'm sitting there, these emotions are starting to come up. And I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. So from my psychotherapy training, I knew that something was, was being lifted up, but I wasn't actually too, too sure of the thoughts. And what was happening is, is this stuff was just clearing. And I'm just sitting there thinking, this is amazing. I'm not even digging in. I'm not even thinking about what it is. And yet I'm having, I'm having this release. So after the sort of, it was about four days or something, and um, the guy came up, he said, I can't believe you stayed in the sessions for like the whole time. Often people have to walk out because so much comes up. I said, oh no, I was really grateful for that actually. I was feeling all this stuff coming up and being released. And it was like, wow, this is, this is great. It feels like, I named it with Lisa once. I said, the, this, path, this path is the lazy man's guide to enlightenment because you can sit back, just express, and stuff can just be, be removed. Or you can even get that with a brother. A brother can express. And in that moment, you're like so joined with them that you realize that the expression is you and it's lifting something completely and utterly from your mind. So that's what we want. So maybe in these words right now, it might be resonating with you and something might be moving through. So we always want to be open, open to whatever needs to move through, move through. Um, and so... This week's been really good. I've had a really beautiful week and this, this word came up. Um, it was from, from a, uh, sort of like some sort of mystic. I, it was from a book and he said, oh, the practice is, is watching the heart. And that's what I named the, the, the show this week. I thought, oh, well, it, something touched me in that. Like, oh, it's about watching the heart. And I thought, well, what does that, what does that really mean? And for me, I think the Course says it's, it's being vigilant for the kingdom only. And whatever's not that um, will come up to be released. But our whole day is only to be focused on the kingdom, no matter what we're doing. And so we can think we need special circumstances for that. Maybe our 
we don't think our job is the perfect playground for forgiveness, but wherever you are is the perfect place to be vigilant for the kingdom because it's only our thoughts coming up. Yeah, and I'll just read a little, a little line from that, which I really like to, to, to help us. It's um, chapter six, the lessons of the Holy Spirit. Be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. I have already told you that you can be vigilant against the ego as for it, as for it. This lesson teaches not only that you can be, but that you must be. It does not concern itself with order of difficulties, but with clear cut priorities for vigilance. And that for me just feels very, very practical to be like, okay, we can actually, we can actually side with the ego and be, and be vigilant and, and actually um, get ourselves caught, caught up in that, in that belief. But it's vigilance for the, for the ego's games, for the, for the patterns that we find ourselves in, the patterns in the mind, so important to find them. And one particular pattern for me is, um, yeah, just this distrust really. I think distrust in people mainly is a real big issue. Um, and it seems like it's just so looping, like um, that I have to hold on to some sort of control to feel safe. Like, um, and that was noticed in me through, we often say like, give a full yes to whatever, whatever's given and whatever you, you, you're, you're doing, really give your heart to it. And often that's easy to say, yes, yes, I will do that. But to really mean it is actually another, another matter altogether. And I think for me, there's this certain part of like holding back this sort of like fear that I could be manipulated by another. I could be um, controlled. Um, I could be hurt. So there's always this sense of, OK, I'm going to be a part of this but I'm still going to keep myself a little bit distance from it just in case something happens. And of course, that something happening is what I generate in my mind. So it's always ever coming from me. So of course, in anger, you find angry situations, but yet the anger is coming from me. It's being generated by me, being put out there to play out a scenario to prove that I'm right about, a, um, about distrusting the world, really. And so that misperception of the cause and effect seeming the effect is out there and now it's causing me a problem is completely wrong that I'm actually generating this issue. And so that's what I want to get to. And so that's what my year's all about is getting to the issue of this uh, thinking that the world's angry and that I'm angry at the world in a way. Um, yeah, like, what will I be if I'm not defending myself? What will I be if I let my guard down? What will I be if I trust a bit more in this process, really? I mean, really, it's just I'm, I'm pushing away the Holy Spirit. I'm pushing away all the support and saying, well, I'm, I'm going to go so far, but I'm still going to trust in myself, which, of course, when I say that, I'm, I'm meaning I'm actually trusting in the ego. And so it's going to take more vulnerability, more surrender, more trust to this process. So I guess that's what I'm, what I'm offering to myself and offering to you today to surrender, to let go a bit more, let go a bit more of this control, let go of the fear of something's going wrong because on this journey, it can feel like things are going wrong, actually. It feels like, God, this doesn't feel comfortable, um, purely because the ego doesn't want that. And we don't remember who our true self is. So yeah, it's kind of interesting because I felt like, oh, there was gonna be some, I had an idea that there was gonna be some big release, but as I've spoke to you, all of that, that fear in my, in my chest has, has just gone. Um, 
And yeah, I wanted to, sh I wanted to share some um, insights as well um, from this week. <clears throat> and it was really interesting, the idea of wanting something. And I found it very painful, actually, to want. Um, I want a burger, for instance. I, I do like burgers, I must admit. And uh, <laughs> it's like, I want a burger. And it's like, when I really started to feel that, maybe you can feel that yourselves, like this wanting of something from, it's, it's wanting something from the world. It's like saying, no, I'm not sustained by the love of God. I actually want to be sustained by this burger. Thank you very much. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but it's just to start to actually feel that these wants, wanting things to be different, wanting things my way. And it was like, it was funny actually because we'd had burgers indoors and I was driving around and uh, the next day and a burger van pulled up in front and I was like, I really want a burger. And I said like, I really want one now. And it was like, all of a sudden in my mind, it was beautiful because I thought, isn't that interesting? I'd only just had one yesterday. So that was the satisfaction, but yet it's always the ego wanting more of something that it cannot have. And so when I think about it, what would I want? Do I want to eat burgers every single day? Is that, gonna, is that what's going to make me happy? Um, this want. And it's like, wow, like chasing this is never ever going to satisfy me. That's what I saw. Um, the last burger clearly never satisfied me because I'm seeing the burger van and thinking, well, I want another burger. <laughs> and it's like just this wanting something outside of myself I can really see. So thank you for the burgers. You've been extremely healing. Like this just wanting, it's just really, really painful. Um, it's just reminded me actually of a, a Krishnamurti um, quote or whatever. And he said, someone asked, what's the difference between me and you? And he said, well, the difference between me and you is I don't mind what happens. It's just, okay, a burger appears, a burger appears, a burger doesn't appear, it's not going to matter. It's really just that um, pull to a desire other than peace, really. And so it was interesting, actually, because we had this situation with a neighbour. They wanted some trees cut um, because it was um, obscuring their view from the house. Yeah, okay, great, fine, we, we come around and talk about it. And there was another element to it, because some of his trees were actually blocking our, our uh, solar panels. So we didn't really have an investment in it, but it was like, okay, if you could chop those trees as well, just putting it out there, then um, that might help with our solar panels. So when he came round, he didn't know this. And so he was Scottish, actually, so he was, and he lived in England as well. So we kind of had this little connection. So we're having this little chat. And he said what he wanted about the trees and everything that he asked for felt good. And then it was Susan that mentioned, said, oh, actually, we, there's a couple of trees in your garden that we would like chopped because um, they actually affect our, our, our solar. And there was this defensiveness that, that seemingly came out from him. And it was like, well, um, those solar panels shouldn't have been put up there in the first place. And this is obscuring my view. And it was like almost like it felt like um, we were in the situation of, I want you to do something and you want us to do something. So we have both almost were getting into something like of the world, like I need this from you and you need me to cut the tree. So almost if you, it's like I could feel from him, he's feeling like, well, uh, if we don't cut the trees, um, if you don't do what I want, then I won't do what you want, that sort of thing. And it just felt like, that was the sort of like energy in the air. And it was just like, oh God, this is, this doesn't feel good. But it was the way he was defensive for me. Normally that would kind of like fire me up inside, be like, hold on a minute. No, if you don't want to help me, then I won't be helping you get off the property. I'm not interested in what you want the trees to be cut. But none of that, none of, none of that came through. And I just thought, isn't this great that I'm not invested he had this strong investment and I, and I didn't feel this investment with him. And that was a real massive thing in this, in this wanting. Um, I thought, wow, he really wants these trees to be cut. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna cut the trees. I mean, 
it, do, it doesn't really matter. And if he didn't want to cut the trees, I didn't feel that investment in me. Um, like, no, we need to get this done because of our solar panels. There wasn't this investment. And this was the second part to this wanting that normally in that situation, I would have gone in with my want and I would have been doing everything to get my want, even if it was to, to never speak to the, to the guy again. I'd be like, okay, I don't care. We're in, a, we're in a war now, so do as I say, or you don't get your trees cut, simple. Um, but it, it just wasn't there. And I was like, wow, this is so great. This, this wanting, this was like the second um, feeling of not wanting something. Like it was just like he had what he had to say and it was like, yeah, that feels good. And I didn't feel the investment in or to push about the trees. He shared what he had to say and I just stayed silent. I didn't have anything to say about what he had to say really about the trees. And afterwards I was like, wow, that's just amazing. When I just, I'm not invested in the form. I'm not invested in this, the, the seeming tree saga that we could get into. Um, and yeah, it just brought up a, a, a lot of stuff for a lot of people actually, like, oh God, it feels like we could get into something with somebody. And of course, normally that would be my normal pattern if someone wasn't seemingly being compliant. But it just felt like such a valuable lesson in really, really looking at what we want and what we're invested in. And why are we even invested in it? Like, like what Jesus says, um, your first problem is, is you want to keep giving peace away. Um, you say you want the peace, but the first obstacle is peace that you keep giving it away. And, and that's like a prime example in that situation. I mean, thank God it never came into my mind. Um, but that could have been a, a time when I could have started to argue my case and lose my peace. Um, but in this circumstance, I didn't lose my peace. Um, and so I just thought, thought like, wow, all these things that I've been invested in in life where I've wanted to get my way have really just been completely and utterly pointless and just letting it, if it's supposed to happen, it will happen. And if it's not meant to happen, it's not meant to happen. We just open up to, to whatever really the guidance is, but we don't have to push and try and make, make something happen. And in a way, that's the same as the healing. It's like just letting it come up. I think that was a little bit about what Calico was, was sharing and Suzanne. It's like just letting it up, but not having no investment in it. Okay, whatever it is, even if it feels really dark and painful, just to really, really let it up. Okay, you're here now. This is the feeling. I just want to go into it. And it's like when I, as I, as I just shared, when I was sat in the room there, I felt all this intensity. And now I'm just talking here, here with you, joining with all my, my brothers. Everything's just seeming um, to be lifted away. So I just feel very, very grateful for these processes of seeming sitting in front of a camera and talking to someone. It's like you've all come to save me and given me this opportunity to listen to whatever I need to be lifted up. So it's always like the opposite than what we think. So really, like, my gratitude is actually to you. And that is the absolute truth. Like, thank you so much for turning up in the dream to allow me to heal. And that's what these um, shows are really all about. Um, and so I felt like we have, we have five minutes to go. And I felt like um, I would like to to read from the course. And maybe if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes and just go in so we can really just experience the power and the glory of what this course teaches, whatever that may be. So if you feel comfortable, you can just relax, close your eyes, go within and that's Let's expect miracles. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Thanks be to you, the Holy Son of God. For as you were created, you contain all things within yourself. And you are still as God created you. 
nor can you dim the light of your perception and your perfection. In your heart, the heart of God is laid. He holds you dear because you are himself. All gratitude belongs to you because of what you are. Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. And from this self is no one left outside. Give thanks for all the countless channels which extend this self. All that you do is given unto him. All that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. Earn now the gratitude you have denied yourself when you forgot the function God has given you. But never think that he has ever ceased to offer thanks to you. Surrounding me is all the life that God created in his love. It calls to me in every heartbeat and in every breath, in every action and in every thought. Peace fills my heart and floods my body with the purpose of forgiveness. Now my mind is healed and all I need to save the world is given me. Each heartbeat brings me peace. Each breath infuses me with strength. I am a messenger of God, directed by his voice, sustained by him in love, and held forever quiet and at peace within his loving arms. Each heartbeat calls his name, and everyone is answered by his voice, assuring me I am at home in him. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me, everyone. As always, it's truly been a pleasure. So happy healing for the week. Lots of love. Peace be with you.